Welcome everyone in the next lecture of uh, pavement stresses. Uh, in this specific lecture, we will try to understand the causes of uh, distresses uh, occur in pavement. We will also try to uh, get the knowledge that how effectively we can select or prefer the pre-overlay treatment strategy uh, through which we can also understand the causes and we also try to understand the mitigation uh, reason of the flexible pavement stresses. Uh, in this specific lecture, uh, the we will mainly try to understand different type of a cracks such as uh, ligator crack, block cracks, um, pumping and so on. Okay. So before to go in a very detail, so the surface stresses is basically the indication of a poor or unfavorable pavement performance or it is the sign of uh, impending failure or the un uh, the uh, unsatisfactory uh, performance or response from the pavement which lead it toward in form of a deterioration. So it there is a, a lot of causes through which uh, stresses can happen, but most of them it uh, actually started from the uh, maybe from the uh, low uh, stiffness of material. It also maybe uh, happen because because of the max uh, like poor max design or maybe because of the poor uh, HMA layer construction or maybe the lack of liquid asphalt uh, emulsion or maybe the uh, excessive use of the moisture in the subgrade layer. When we the very first topic the uh, very first type is we called alligator or fatigue cracking. Illigator or fatigue cracking are basically the series of interconnected cracks which caused by the fatigue failure of asphalt surface or stabilized base under the repeated loading. It basically uh, initiate at the bottom of uh, asphalt uh, concrete or asphalt surface layer uh, or maybe also happen in the uh, stabilized layer as well. Usually rut occur in the uh, HMA layer while when we talk about fatigue it usually occur in the uh, supporting layer. But the alligator cracks are uh, originally uh, propagate or usually uh, can be seen with uh, our own naked eyes in the very top layer. So crack basically uh, propagate to the surface and connect to form many sided sharp uh, angled pieces. Okay. So it basically occur in the wheel path. Uh, as you can see here in the uh, in the uh, form of uh, alligator or uh, fatigue cracking, it usually occur in three in three uh, different locations. Such as it, uh, if we if we would like to see it with our own naked eyes, it it will exactly start with a very low crack, exactly in the wheel path, and then it will reach it to the moderate level and then it will reach it to the high level but when it reach it to the high level it exactly look like a crocodile back that's why we call them alligator cracks not sorry uh, crocodile the uh, alligator one the alligator or fatigue crack as you can see here in that figure that it refers to the crack on the asphalt which uh, exactly look like at the back of uh, alligator so this form of cracks occur in the uh, like when longitudinal cracks connect with the transverse crack so like the uh, it also connected in the x axis while in the y axis uh, as well so those longitudinal cracks and transverse cracks are spread over a large area uh, over the pavement for a longer period of a time but then with passage of time, as it was mentioned in the uh, previous uh, picture or the uh, figure, it originally start with the crack, then it reached to the low level and then moderate and then it reached to the high level. So the uh, alligator cracking uh, in asphalt pavement is basically a sign of a failure when uh, uh, under the asphalt surface so filling in the alligator crack with a patching product only offer a temporary repair solution 
to the area where the alligator cracks happen it should be the only treatment is to soccer this area in remove the base coats which should be inspected and corrected depending on what type of cracks is already uh, happened there in a very simple word so we need to investigate if if the fatigue cracks already damage the supporting layer until the uh, sub base or like uh, subgrade so if it if it uh, require the treatment from the top to down then of course we need to come up with the maintenance uh, strategy type d where we need to uh, repair or like rehabilitate the whole road but uh, for example from the site inspection if only hma layer is damaged so then we only need to do the socket the uh, hma layer and then we need to replug it the second type is about the block cracking so block cracks divide the asphalt surface into the uh, approximately rectangular pieces so block ranges from 1 feet square to 100 feet square in the area block cracks can also vary in different size so it could be like larger or like smaller so we classified them as a longitudinal as well as transverse cracking it could also be happen in flexible as well as in the rigid pavement as well it is basically caused because of the shrinkage of hot mix asphalt number one the second is because but the block crack is originally not the only type of a crack which is not the load induced crack so it could also but uh, for example when the when the load will uh, apply on those spot on those blocks of course it could damage the uh, supporting layer it it mainly occur because of the low temperature and improper grade of the of the asphalt so this is the main and important reason of the block cracks uh, as you can see here it exactly look like the block or like square so uh, initially it start uh, from like low and then reach it to the moderate and then it reach it to the high so block rate is mainly caused uh, because of the shrinkage of the asphalt concrete or like daily temperature variation cycling and it is basically not load uh, induced or uh, associated so the occurrence of block rig usually indicates that asphalt had uh, kind of a hardened uh, significantly so block cracking normally occur over a large portion of the pavement area so uh, as you can see here it will be quietly visible in the direction of the traffic or in the uh, or uh, exactly at the edge of the shoulder the next type of the cracks is called joint cracks from the concrete slab so joint cracks basically occur on the pavement that have an asphalt surface or a jointed uh, concrete slab so cracks occur over transverse uh, as well as the longitudinal joints so such type of cracks uh, basically occur from the movement of the slab below or beneath of the temperature variation and moisture changes so mm, such type of cracks are basically not kind of a load induced as well so uh, joint reflection cracks are originally occur because of the temperature and moisture changes within the pavement surface next one is about the land shoulder or drop off or the half so it is basically the uh, difference uh, in elevation between the traffic lane and the uh, shoulder lane so it main causes is because of the when uh, whenever there is a drop off due to the uh, consolidation due to the uh, settlement or the pumping effect it also could be because of the swelling of the soils so the uh, soil shoulder or like the uh, lane shoulder uh, it could also because of the blowing up of the material when the load is uh, acting on exactly the pumping area so the next type is the longitudinal cracks longitudinal cracks are the 
uh, type of a cracks which are uh, originally act in the parallel direction of the uh, pavement so those cracks exactly occur in the uh, transverse direction across the uh, center line so it the main causes of longitudinal cracks could be, be uh, uh, it is also called the low temperature cracking as well it may be because of the uh, asphalt hardening as well uh, maybe some of you have already idea that's why we actually try to uh, determine the asphalt softening and hardening point before to uh, use it as a uh, additive material or binder material in the uh, hot mix uh, asphalt layer so if we did not uh, uh, like kind of a uh, investigate or determine the exact hardening of the uh, asphalt so or like for example if we already mix or aid the uh, softening uh, like the uh, soften asphalt so the asphalt hardening or like longitudinal cracks could be occur it could also be occur because of the poor of the uh, poor construction of the uh, paving lane as well uh, as you can see here longitudinal cracks uh, intensity usually go from the very top layer to the uh, uh, like until the uh, subgrade layer so it uh, effect is quite severe and it uh, actually uh, like for example uh, like damage the whole pavement from top to down so the longitudinal crack is uh, you can see here from like that specific figure uh, that uh, we can also come up with a uh, like how we can uh, refill uh, such type of a crack so we can also use the uh, crack seal and uh, so to uh, reduce the entry of the moment or of the moisture uh, exactly at the joints and we can also come up with the to like remove or like replace those uh, crack pavement layer and also come up with uh, some uh, kind of a, a data uh, admixture so through which we could uh, we could uh, improve the sealant characteristic so that the water and moisture should not infiltrate within the pavement surface the next type is about water bleeding and pumping <coughs> uh, so the water accumulation or water bleed or like bleeding occurs when water seeps out from the joints or or the cracks or through the cracks in the hot mix asphalt layer or in the supporting layer so pumping occurs when water and fine mid and fine material is ejected from underlying layer through the cracks in the hot mix asphalt under the moving load so water equal uh, water uh, accumulation or the uh, addition in the uh, supporting layer it could also cause because of the high water table and also because of the poor drainage uh, characteristic or uh, infrastructure or also because or also maybe because of the poor joint seal as well so if the water bleeding or pumping occurs so what like uh, what type of cracks or like what type of problem we could face in future so it will also decrease the structural as well as the functional characteristic of the pavement which could also lead it to the linear cracking as well as to the cracking or the uh, corner breaks and it will lead it to the faulting and then the end point will be the deterioration or the complete damage of the of that specific pavement layer uh, so in 2015 uh, i had also published one article that how the uh, effect of changing supporting condition uh, could be uh, affect directly the uh, joint and plane uh, plane concrete pavement uh, or like how the pumping effect could damage its uh, characteristics so like the the main theme of the pumping are only to share my article uh, in this specific lecture that the changes in support condition along the joint have also significant impact on the deterioration and to increase the stresses in deflection 
within the pavement surface which is a very important factor for the pavement designer and to for example because if such type of a uh, elements did not control that will decrease the structural performance of the pavement surface the second important topic of today is we will also try to understand what is rotting what is fatigue so from the top you can see when uh, when we have uh, a wheel is acting basically uh, from the top so basically what is rut the longitudinal depression in the wheel path is called rut the longitudinal depression in the wheel path is called rut while the uh, permanent deformation of a pavement due to a uh, progressive accumulation of a viscoelastic vertical compressive strain under the uh, traffic loading so what is basically crack as you can see here we have also uh, like we have a fatigue crack but first of all we will try to explain the crack as well so the crack is basically the separation of a continuous medium so uh, later on first of all we have the uh, depression uh, uh, in the exactly in the wheel path and after that it convert to the fatigue crack so what is fatigue crack fatigue crack is basically due to the repetitive load due to the series of interconnecting cracks which actually lead it in the in the uh, fatigue in the uh, fatigue form okay here we have also uh, just mentioned something about viscoelastic material as well so we call the bitumen is a viscoelastic material okay what is visco what is elastic this uh, actually viscous means resist uh, the the ability of a material which basically resist water and also resist shear flow and strain linearly with the time when these stresses are applied what is elastic which contain uh, actually the bitumen naturally contains visco and elastic uh, characteristic under the action of the loading so the elastic is basically when we have uh, under the uh, application of a load when the whole material is stretched and immediately it return to its original state over this when the uh, stress is basically removed so the viscoelastic basically bitumen we called it a time dependent strain material okay so rot is basically the uh, the crack in the longitudinal path of the wheel while the fatigue is basically uh, due to the repeated load and because of the inter series of the cracks the next topic is about the rotting so rotting is basically uh, characterized by the depression that occur in the form of a uh, in the wheel path it main causes could be the high asphalt content or maybe the rounded uh, aggregate or maybe the low air voids or maybe the structural problems so we have uh, the two types of the uh, rutting which usually occur in the pavement surface so the result of excessive consolidation of the pavement along the wheel path due to either reduction of the air voids in the asphalt concrete layer or the permanent deformation of the base or the uh, subgrade so the uh, consolidation rotting usually occur because of the weak subgrade or because of the uh, subgrade deformation as well so this is one uh, uh, typical figure uh, as you can see here the wheel path is actually we have a kind of a rotting or the permanent depression uh, in the wheel path while the middle portion is kind of a raised so we have the uh, lateral movement and the material creep within the uh, geometry or the uh, infrastructure of of that specific pavement surface next type of the uh, pavement is about the bleeding so bleeding is uh, actually the coming out of the water from the pavement surface is called bleeding so bleeding is uh, originally uh, characterized from the excess asphalt binder on the surface of the pavement uh, it main causes could be because of the excess prime or pack coat it may be because of the maximum content or the uh, excessive asphalt content in the mixture that's why we usually say that 
whenever there is a road construction to uh, use the optimum binder content is one of the essential point for the uh, kind of a stability or for the uh, success of the pavement life it may be because of the drainage uh, issues as well okay the last type is about the slippage so slippage is originally the uh, characterized which is uh, referred to the uh, crescent or the half moon shaped quay which generally have the two ended point into the different direction of the cracks it main causes may be because of the thin layer like the uh, the uh, thickness of each and every layer such as base course or sub base course it is maybe thin it is maybe uh, below the uh, standard layer or uh, it it could also be because of the insufficient or like maybe it because of the too much uh, thick coat is also provided in the uh, in the uh, top layer as well or maybe it is because of the wrong type or like wrong selection of the material or maybe because of the too much extra compaction in rolling as well uh, is you can see here uh, with your own naked eyes that the whole pavement is uh, like originally divided in the two uh, moon type for example both of them have different ends so it is kind of a in the uh, parabola type or like there is a one uh, race point top point while there are a two kind of a legs so these were the the main basic points or like the main basic types of the uh, distresses it could happen in the uh, pavement uh, pavement surface i hope that you have enjoyed enjoyed the lecture for the pavement design tutorial you can also follow my other lectures as well thank you for your interest and for your time